Hello. Today I am going to talk to you about the essay which I've assigned to you concerning uh, parallels between Don Quixote and Alice in Wonderland. Now I trust you have read the description of the essay and, under, and have a rough idea of what is being asked of you to do. I want to enlarge on that a bit. Okay, so what you're trying to do is to compare in these two texts instances in which you see a tension between an old way of understanding the world and a new way of understanding the world. Now we've already observed this in Quixote. You know, we have observed how Quixote is sticking to what he believes to be true regardless of what he sees in the world. Whereas Sancho is constructing what he believes to be true on the basis of what he sees in the world. And in Alice in Wonderland, when Alice tumbles into, tumbles into the rabbit hole and encounters a wide range of creatures, in every instance, she insists that some, some things are true and so because that's how they've been true to her in the world from which she came. Whereas her various protagonists are, sorry, antagonists are saying, no, no, Alice, in this world, it's very di di different because we see it in a, we see this in an entirely different way. And throughout the, 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 the adventure, we see Alice struggling with what she is convinced is true and with what she is being told is true. So that is the general parallel between the two works. And I give you one ex example from Alice in Wonderland in the essay description. So, for this essay, you will review what you've read in Don Quixote and identify instances in which you see this tension, this contrast between what Quixote insists is true, because that's what I believe, and between what Sancho says is true, because he can see it. And then you will do the same for Alice in these selections I provided, you, know, you will you, you will identify where Alice says, I know this is true. Like, I'm not one mile high. I know that I'm not. Whereas the king says, oh, no, no. In this world, you are one mile high. I can see you one mile high. So we have this Again, it's the same sort of t tension between what I believe and what I can see. And of course, faith is how we bridge what we see with what we believe and vice versa. So, once you've identified these instances in both works, you will compare, contrast, and identify parallels between them. And you must provide quotes from each work, direct quotes with footnotes, of course. So it's a matter of identifying, analyzing, comparing, and finally concluding. Okay, now once you've done that, you will go a little farther afield to explore how this tension between old and new might work itself out in your own life. For instance, we talked before about the scientific revolutions, development of the scientific method. 
We understand that we employ this scientific method every day, whether it be in science or almost anything else we do. And it's there's nothing wrong with the method. But we also understand that underneath this method is the idea of God. So we are adhering to what we believe, like even as what we use, what we can see. We see the evidence of the world, and we are drawing conclusions about how the world works, but ultimately we understand that the world works the way it does because God has ordered it in that way. <coughs> Excuse me. To give a, another example, we've talked before as well as about the Enlightenment and its emphasis on the primacy of reason for understanding truth and its rejection of God as a way to truth. And we observe that we enjoy reason. You know, we, use, you know, we use reason probably every minute of the day, the day. Our ability to reason is part of our capacities of uh, from being made in the image of God. So there, so reason is not wrong. Science is not wrong. <clears throat> but we, but we also understand that re reason, as Aquinas pointed out many centuries ago, will not enable us to find the truth of God. That requires a step of faith. So. Those, and then let's take just one more music. We all enjoy music. Some of the music, as we know, is less than G-rated. But we still appreciate it for perhaps its tonal structure, maybe it's a melody or whatever, or maybe the 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 sensations, the feelings it, uh, it, 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 it arouses in us, um, like all number of things. We understand that the ability to make music is a gift from God. It's part of our, again, part of our being made in the image of God. However, <clears throat> We need to balance our enjoyment and our appreciation of this music with what we also believe to be true, meaning the fact of God, that this is a God with a God who's who's a holy God with moral standards and who encompasses all meaning in his purview of creativity. <clears throat> These are just three examples. When you use examples in your essay, you must be specific. You must give specific examples. In other words, don't just say, I love music and I love God, and I can put those two together in this way. No, you need to give me a specific example from music or from science or from whatever you find yourself comparing. Um, <clears throat> and when you do the ex examples, you can uh, you need to provide a maximum of two, well, sorry, two, okay? N not just one, two. If you want to provide three, that's all the better, but you need to provide at least two to be credible. Okay, I think that's about it. Again, just to review, I identify instances in which you see this tension between believing and seeing and coyote and analysis, <coughs> excuse me, then um, compare, analyze, conclude, and then the next part of the essay is to impose this sort of schemata on instances in your own life where you observe the tension between your belief 
and what you see, and how you can re reconcile the two. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.